we've got some upcoming movie releases. Now, please keep in mind, we're going to give you some dates, but please keep in mind, these are all subject to change. Some movies have already shifted, been pushed back, mostly due to the strikes, but we're going to give us a go to, uh, to give you an update. So first up, we've got Saw 10 set to hit theaters on September 29th, starring Tobin Bell. Now, according to IMDb, John Kramer, a.k.a. Jigsaw, is chasing a promising procedure that will allegedly cure his cancer. But when he heads to Mexico to go through an experimental treatment, he discovers it's all a scam. Now the scammers will become the prey of Jigsaw's new game. All right, I am not a Saw fan. I think I saw part of the first one when it came out years ago. Is this still a vital... I know that I think Chris Rock rebooted it at one point. Is this still a vital horror series? Are people dying to see this one? And, you know, we, we've been doing a lot of horror stuff. Brooklyn Horror Film Festival has sent us to a couple of different early screenings, which we thank them for. They've been great. Uh, I don't know if we'll get a ticket to this one. I don't know if I'm going to go. Torture porn is really not my thing. Also, on September 29th, The Creator, starring John David Washington and Allison Janney. The sci-fi thriller is the story of the future war between the human race and and artificial intelligence. An ex-Special Forces agent is recruited to hunt down and kill the creator of the elusive architect of the advanced AI. So Bill Hammond did a, uh, a worst trailer in the world video on this over on his YouTube channel. I didn't think the trailer was all that bad. Uh, it does seem a little bit cliche about, you know, man fighting artificial and intelligence it's a little skynet it's a little terminator john david washington is great though and i love alice and janney those are both two really high level high class actors i think we're going to see more of this stuff where people are <laughs> fighting artificial intelligence we said this about the mission impossible last mission impossible about fighting ai it's like definitely written by a wga writer you know for this one it's september 29th yeah, if you're, you know, if you're sci-fi not, it it looks really good. It's a really good looking film. I'm sure the effects and, and things like that are great. We'll see what the creator has to offer. All right, next we've got Killers of the Flower Moon, starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Jesse Plemons. Finally, we've got a release date. So we first reported on this film when it premiered at Cannes earlier this year. It's the story of a series of mysterious murders of members of the Osage tribe in the 1920s, which sparks a major FBI investigation involving J. Edgar Hoover. It was originally slated for theatrical release on October 6th, but according to Variety, the film has been rescheduled and will be released worldwide on October 20th. It is also set to stream later this year on Apple TV, but we don't have a date for that yet. Uh, Martin Scorsese, Leonardo DiCaprio, they've been a great pairing. Robert De Niro's also in this film. It looks really good. Probably one of those films coming out at the end of the year looking for Oscar contention. Next up, we've got The Exorcist. Believer, starring Ellen Burstyn and Leslie Odom Jr. It is set for release on October 30th. It's a sequel to the original 1973 film. In the film, two young girls go missing, only to return days later behaving strangely. Lo and behold, they suspect demonic possession. After consulting doctors and the church, the father of one of the girls seeks out Chris McNeil, played by the great Ellen Burstyn, who is reprising her role from the original film. McNeil's daughter, Reagan, was possessed by a demon and exorcised by a young priest and an old priest. You know the story. When McNeil meets the girls, she suspects that they are possessed by the same demon that possessed her daughter. I love Ellen Burstyn. I think she's one of the greatest actors uh, to, to live in the modern era. And Leslie Odom Jr. is fantastic as well. So, you know, they, they made a point of doing some high-level, like, Oscar-worthy casting for this film. I, I don't know if it's going to be as good as the, the original Exorcist, but that was, like, a classic. It was pivotal. It changed the genre. You know, now it's, it's almost a cliche, but uh, it did look interesting. I was interested to see how they were going to pick up the story so many years later. I mean, you're, you're talking about this is over, like, it's like a 50-year-old movie at this point. And we also don't have Linda Blair. We don't have Reagan. So I don't know what they're going to do with this one. It looks it looks interesting. Don't know if I'll run out to the theater to see it, but definitely curious. So as I said at the top of the segment, these dates are all subject to change. 
Some of these films have already been pushed back, uh, I think mainly due to the strikes from the WGA and sag after unions. Or, you know, there's always other reasons. Films are pushed back all the time. Uh, one film that was pushed back is called Damsel. It was slated for release later this year on Netflix, but now it's been pushed back to 2024. Damsel is the story of a dutiful damsel who agrees to marry a handsome prince, only to find that the royal family has recruited her as a sacrifice to repay an ancient debt. Thrown into a cave with a fire-breathing dragon, she must rely on her wits and will to survive. What's happening now is we've got these studios and they're realizing they really need these movie stars to sell these movies. If they want anybody to see these things, if they want awards, if they want just visibility, they're going to need stars to walk out on red carpets and do junket interviews and all that stuff that stars do in addition to acting in the films. So, uh, you know, they're going to need Millie Bobby Brown to come out to a red carpet and do junket interviews to get this movie seen. Another film that has been pushed back is Dune Part 2, starring Timothy Chalamet and Zendaya. It was originally set to release in November, but has been pushed back now to March 25th next year. I enjoyed the first part of Dune, and we reviewed it on the show. Part 1 was released during the pandemic, and I suspect that you know most people watched it on what was then called HBO Max. I think it would be great if Warner Brothers slash Discovery, a.k.a. Disco Brothers, re-release the first part in theaters when they release part two. This way, people who didn't get to see it in a theater, like me, I watched it at home, would get to see it on a big screen. I think it's worth it. Uh, Denis Villeneuve really knows how to make a movie. We really like the first part, so I'm, I'm anxious to see the second. Now, Netflix is also set to release uh, Pain Hustlers, starring Emily Blunt and Chris Evans on October 27th. But if Blunt and Evans aren't able to do their marketing obligations due to the strikes, that could get pushed back as well. I also think films like The Marvels, which is scheduled to come out on November 10th, may get pushed back. And The Hunger Games prequel, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, as well as even smaller films like Next Goal Wins, which is slated for release in November as well, they all may suffer the same fate. All right, we're going to do our best to keep you updated on these movie releases, and we've got lots more film festival coverage coming your way.